Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is a, another beginner's tutorial on C++. And in this tutorial we're going to create a basic Hello World C++ program and run it. So I'm going to explain um, a lot of kind of things to you in this tutorial, but there's no need to memorize everything I'm saying here. I'm just going to kind of uh, begin to introduce you to some ideas. And the important thing here is after this tutorial to go away and create your own Hello World C++ program. So hopefully by this point you've got an IDE installed, uh, preferably Eclipse, but another one's good too. And you've got a compiler installed. And um, if, if the two are not talking to each other properly, then this is the point at which you'll probably find that out. And you'll have to go away, do some Googling and figure out how to tell your IDE where the compiler is. So um, let's, let's take a look. So here's Eclipse and I'm going to go to File, New C++ Project. And if you're using like uh, another IDE like Visual uh, C++ or something, then you might have to use a different menu option. But usually with C++ uh, in your IDE you create a project first. And that's not a C++ concept, that's to do with your IDE, it's a way of organizing your files. So you create a C++ project in your IDE and then you can add C++ files to it. Let's give this project a name and I'm going to call it Hello World. And in Eclipse here I'm going to select Hello World C++ Project as, as this option here. And um, all IDEs, as far as I know, um, uh, they will provide you with a way of creating a Hello World project uh, automatically, which um, is good because, believe, believe me, just getting a basic C++ program running is a huge achievement. And when you've done this, uh, in my opinion, it sort of, if anything, gets slightly easier from here on in. So um, I'm going to create a Hello World C++ project and I'm just, just going to click Next here. You can go through all these screens if you want. Let's just step through them or you can just click Finish straight away. Let's go Next. And uh, here we've got uh, Debug and Release Targets which I'm going to talk about in a little while. And I'm just going to click Finish. So here's, here's the project and uh, we can already run this and to actually run it um, in some IDEs you can just click the run button straight away. In this version of Eclipse uh, we've got to go to project and build project. So when you create a C++ uh, project you need to build it. Building it basically means doing all the steps that are involved uh, in taking your text file and turning it into a program. That's called building it. So, and there are several steps involved but your IDE will do those automatically for you. So we need to build the project and we can then run it. So I can now click Run, um, this green Run button here in Eclipse. And we can see it says Hello World down here. So we've actually run a C++ program. And that text is actually coming from here. You can see there are two double quotes here. And a good thing to do is replace the text between the double quotes with something else. Let's say, hello the world. So between the double quotes, it's just ordinary English text. You can use most characters there with a few exceptions. Uh, like um, if you put a, I don't know, maybe a, um, like a backslash in, you could have problems because there's some special characters that have a special meaning within strings in C++. But uh, basically you can put pretty much anything in there. It, maybe even just the backslash actually, just to come, come to think of it. That might be the only problem. Let's run that again. Now it's already built, Eclipse will let me run this program uh, by just clicking the Run button. And it asks me if I want to save it, so I say yes. And it's just going to build it, automatically rebuild it and run it. And it says hello there world again. Now if, if you're using a different compiler, this could look slightly different. The return zero could be missing. Um, this might say void instead of int. There might be stuff between these two brackets. Uh, I or stream here, uh, in, that stands for input output stream. It might be I or stream dot h. It's possible that even this might be missing. So it might look a little different. 
and uh, that's that's a great thing about getting your your IDE to generate it automatically that it's going to generate one appropriate for, for your compiler and the main program this is this is the um, the main function we call it uh, is one of the areas in which there's some diversity from compiler to compiler in C++. Uh, this would probably work with most compilers, if not all, but yeah, um, yeah it's, not, it's not completely sure. So, um, so having done that, let's, let's take a little bit of a look at this. And uh, As I say, the, the, the take home thing for this tutorial is to get your compiler to generate this um, this program and then run it, figure out how to do that. And if it doesn't work at this point, if you get some weird messages, uh, make sure you've got your compiler installed and then just Google for how to, um, how to get your IDE to link to that compiler that you've installed. And that's gonna be a little different depending on what platform you're on and what compiler and IDE you're using. For me, it was very simple. I didn't have to do any configuration as far as I can recall. I just um, installed the uh, the GNU C++ compiler uh, on the Mac and I just unzipped Eclipse, downloaded it and unzipped it and somehow it found it but that's not necessarily going to be the case on other platforms so I can't give specific instructions but it's, it's really important to get into the habit of googling stuff like this. So one, one really good thing to do is to type this out yourself from scratch and at that point, uh, if you're anything like me, you will make uh, some terrible mistakes and it won't work. And you'll have to refer back to, you know, you can take a copy of this, put it in Notepad or something, and refer back to that copy. And then you can see what you've missed out, what you've done wrong, which is a very, very valuable thing to do. So let's, let's see if we can reconstruct this from scratch. Um, so the first thing that was in there was just a comment, and I don't know exactly what it said, but in C++ if you type two forward slashes like this, these are forward slashes, uh, then you can type um, whatever you like on the same line after it. So I could put hello world, and it's just a comment to yourself. And people always say, uh, programmers, that uh, commenting your code is very, very important. And it is, but um, almost every programmer I, I've known was lazy about it. Uh, to be honest with you and also sometimes you end up writing comments changing the code and you forget to change the comment and then the comment is nothing but a confusion so uh, I, I don't know I'm not a big commenter but I try to make comments if I type some code that I'm then going to look at later and think what the hell is that supposed to do it's really helpful to type some comments before so you could have um, you know more comments there a basic program you can put them wherever you like as long as they start with these uh, forward slashes. But don't worry about memorizing this, we'll be, we'll be looking at it again. And you could just miss those out, of course, as well. And the next line was uh, it started with a hash sign and it said, then include immediately after the hash sign. And then we had an open um, and close, uh, like diamond bracket. And these uh, uh, brackets in C++, they always come in pairs, pretty much always. So whenever you type an opening bracket, you should always put the closing bracket in immediately, and your IDE will usually do that for you. Uh, and it's, if it doesn't, it's really important to make sure that you start off with a pair of brackets. And then inside these brackets, we're gonna type iostream, lowercase. Again, C++ is case sensitive, so you need to get the case of things correct. And what this is actually doing, um, you won't understand most of what's in this basic program uh, until you've been doing C++ for a while. We're gonna to have to look at more concepts before you can understand the, the basic Hello World program. But I'm gonna just make some remarks just to begin to get you used to it. And what this is actually doing is it's actually an instruction to take a file uh, called iostream and actually literally put it in the, um, this file or like uh, some copy of this file before compiling it, before turning it into an actual program. So you, you don't see that happening, it happens behind the scenes, but we're actually picking up another file and bunging it in here, um, almost literally. And then we're gonna say using name space standard, it's actually STD, and then a semicolon. Uh, and in C++, uh, 
a lot of what, well, what you're typing will consist of statements and a statement has to finish in a semicolon. Uh, not everything is, is a complete statement though, but basically in C++ you have to get into the habit, uh, as in Java, of typing semicolons at the end of most lines. So there isn't one here. This for some reason is not considered a statement, sorry this one, but this is and it has to have a semicolon at the end of it. And uh, often when you start out, you'll, you'll just miss out the semicolons by mistake. But um, gradually you get used to putting them in uh, because you need them. And then following that, we had int. And uh, main, int is uh, a type declaration. We'll talk about that very shortly. Main is the name of a function, a subroutine. And then we're going to have two round brackets. So again, I put the opening and closing one in at the same time. Even if you're going to type stuff between the brackets, put the closing one in where you have the opening one. Uh, sorry, put the, immediately put the closing bracket in after typing the opening one. And then again, another illustration of this is we now have two curly brackets. So an open curly bracket. And if I hit return, Eclipse here is putting the closing curly bracket in for me uh, immediately. And if it doesn't, if you're using an IDE that doesn't do that, well, probably get another IDE, but uh, type it yourself. Always have pairs of brackets. Then the next line was like this. It said C out, uh, which is technically an object, but again, we'll get onto that. And then two, um, th this is actually called these two um, here, although it's the same symbol as this. Here, this is not con these are not considered brackets. The these are what we call an operator. This is actually the um, in the insertion operator, I think it's called, or sometimes put to. I just like to call them chevrons because they look like chevrons. Uh, so it's the um, insertion operator. And uh, after that, two double quotes. And again, when you, when you type a, a double quote or a single quote, put the other closing quote in immediately because they, they almost always have to be in pairs. And um, here we can type some text, whatever we like. So we'll put hello world, hello world. And then after that, another insertion operator and then endler, which stands for end line, and then a semicolon. Uh, so you, can, you think of this, these um, insertion operators, you think of them inserting this stuff kind of into this object. The syntax of this thing here, C out, is, uh, is, a, is a little bit weird. So um, again, this, this isn't something that uh, as a programmer you'd really even think about that much. You just get used to typing this with practice, with doing it over and over again. So you don't have to worry about it too much. And this endler is actually um, creating a, a blank line at the end of hello world. So if we output more text after this, we'd, we'd get more lines of stuff. And then finally, after that, I'm going to type return zero semicolon. So it's another statement ending in a semicolon. And the zero is actually a code that's uh, we say it's returned in this case to your operating system. And zero by convention means everything's okay. So uh, it's not an error code. Um, like we could say one, two, or three, we could say that those are error codes, you know, in our program. But it's a zero to say everything's fine. And then uh, let's run this again. So I'll click the run button. Uh, yeah, I want to save it. And it says, hello world. So this is a complete C++ program. You can experiment with this a little bit if you want, but we're gonna look at that more in, um, in a future tutorial. And probably at the moment, any change you make will probably break it because uh, at the moment, if, you, if you're new to this, you don't know what you're doing and that's normal. It's also normal to have great difficulty remembering all this because when you first see it, it just looks like nothing on earth. Um, and that's why I'm, I'm taking it so slowly here. So yeah, just, just try to get this work, try to get your IDE to generate this. And if you can be bothered, type it out yourself and see where you go wrong, because that's very useful to do. Um, one, one last thing that I want to do in this tutorial is just, we're just gonna look a little bit at the structure of the folders and the files uh, that the IDE has actually generated for us. And again, you don't need to memorize this. I'm just kind of mentioning it to begin to get you familiar with it. If we expand Hello World here, um, we can see there's a debug folder. And um, by default, most compilers will generate 
a um, a debug. Actually, I'm not sure if it is the default, but certainly in this case, we developed a debug version of the program. So the program we've created is not intended to be given to people. It's intended for developing programs, and it's got special symbols in it that can help us uh, find the bugs in the program. But what we can do is we can go to, um, let's see, project, build configurations, and I go to set active and release. And again, this differs depending on your IDE, but usually you can find a pretty simple way. It, maybe in Visual C++, it's just a drop down box on the toolbar or something. I, I don't know, because um, I haven't used it recently. But I'm gonna go to build configuration, set active, release. And we say here that we've configured it to build a release target. The target is the program we're creating. So we're talking about creating a release target that we can actually release to people, give to people. And I click, let's click project, build project. We've now got another folder called release. And if I expand that, uh, this is actually our program and I can run the release version as well. And it says, hello world. Um, let's let's now, um, oh yeah, so here's a source folder with hello world.cpp. Let's just go to the console and take a look at this. So I'm going to show you console instructions um, while well, here on my Mac, which is uh, a Unix-like system. Very, very common to, get, uh, to create C++ in a Unix-like system. For example, Unix or the, or the Mac OS or uh, Linux. But um, if you're using, so if you're using Windows, uh, then the commands you'd have to type would be a bit different here. And I'm not going to get into a tutorial on um, console commands, but I'll explain a little bit. And uh, yeah, it, it is, if you don't know how to use a console for your system, it is worth learning uh, because that's probably something that you will need later on as a, if you're going to be a C++ developer. Uh, so let's go, to, um, let's go to the terminal here in the Mac. And in Windows, it's called um, the, the, I think the, the Windows console. And you, you used to be able to start it by going to the start menu and then there's a, in one of the submenus there was something called command cmd, or you could go run command cmd, uh, but anyway. So uh, I'm just going to go to this program here, I'm going to click on the program folder, the root folder, go and right click and go to properties and uh, resource here, and there you can see where the, the project's actually created, so I'll, I'll just copy that. Copy this path, and I'm going to go to the terminal, and I'm going to type CD, and in double quotes, let's paste in that path. So this will look a little different on Windows, but on Windows it's also CD, I think, change directory, and hit return, and then I'm going to do LS. On Windows it will be DIR, uh, D-I-R. And here we can see the contents of my project folder. If I do LS source, uh, that's SRC, um, we call this source code, the stuff we're actually typing, and I can see what's in it. Probably DIR, D-I-R source would work on Windows, I think. And, um, or you might have to CD into the actual source folder. I don't know, it also works. But here, here's my actual code. And um, yeah, in a Unix system, I can do cat, type H, and um, uh, I'm using the bash shell here, so I can type um, tab to complete the file name. But don't worry about these details. Um, I just want to kind of begin to get you familiar with this. And so there's my program. Let's go back, cd, cd, space, dot, dot. I think on Windows, there's no space after cd, but anyway. So we're in the root folder. And let's take a look at the release folder. So I'll say cd space release and um, ls. And we can see in here, uh, we've got, this is actually the program. It's not really good to have spaces in the name of a program. So if you release that, you might want to rename it to get rid of the spaces, but I can run it. Uh, on Windows, you probably just type the name of it, possibly in double quotes if it's got spaces. Um, on, on Unix type systems, we need dot slash and hello world usually. And it's actually, yes, yeah, prefix the space with a backslash to escape it. But anyway, and if I hit return, there it actually runs. So you, you uh, pr I, I probably could just copy this program here, this binary file, and give it to someone else who has a Mac 
and they could probably just run it. But it's normal with C++ to create installers uh, that put all the right files that you need in the right place. And this program, it's, it's going to be using some shared libraries, like it's going to be using code uh, that are in libraries located elsewhere on my system. And uh, the, the end user might not have those libraries, I don't know. So uh, for that reason, it's, it's common to, um, to create installers that make sure everything's in the right place, but installers are outside the scope of, of this, this tutorial. And that's a separate thing, unfortunately, that you have to learn if you want to get seriously into distributing C++ programs to, um, to end users yourself. Uh, we've also got in here um, a make file, and again, I'm probably not going to go into make files. Uh, our, our IDE has generated it automatically for us, and we, if we look at it, it looks quite cryptic at first. Uh, it's possible to have a whole career in C++ without understanding make files, but on the other hand, many companies use make files to build C++ programs, and um, so it's probably worth learning if you're going to get seriously into this as a career but uh, if you just want to write programs yourself you can probably just let your IDE deal with it and, and not worry about it and we've also got um, that so the structure the exact structure of these folders depends on your IDE but let's let's take a look at this source folder here if we go into SRC there's like a sub source folder within uh, this release folder I don't really know why um, and that, that's probably going to be different if you're using a different compiler or IDE. Uh, but one thing to notice is that there's probably going to be somewhere a hello world.o. That's called an object file. It's a, it's a binary file. Um, but later on we say that we link it. We link it with the appropriate libraries to create the final program. And that's just something that I wanted to make you aware of at the moment. Okay, so, so that's it for this tutorial. Uh, don't feel intimidated by all those details. Uh, you can count this as a, you can count your progress here as being totally successful when you can just get your IDE to generate a program and run it. Like I say, type it in as well if, if you can be bothered to, but first get your IDE to generate it and run it. And we're gonna go over all the important concepts uh, again later on. So that's it from me this time, and uh, until next time, happy coding.